Did you know in the last 70 years, there has only been one housing crash? One housing crash. Everybody wants to talk about 2006 through 2008 as the thing that's going to happen. I want to talk about that today because I think as we continue to progress during this time of change, we're going to hear more news around a housing bubble, a housing bust. We're going to hear more news about job loss increases, the economy slowing down, and house, housing crashing. Housing crashing? The housing market crashing. Can't, can't put all the ings together. I have not had enough coffee this morning. Peter is delivering my Starbucks and he is not here yet. I'm just saying. Um, but to think about the fact that in the last 70 years, there's only been one housing crash talks about the strength of our housing market. Our housing market is not just an investment. It is a place to live. It is a roof over our head. It is where we raise our children, right? This is so much more than an investment. The volatility of the stock market right now might make your stomach hurt, especially if you have a ton of money in it. I get that. That volatility is going to continue as this, this year and inflation is reined in as the Fed acts with the 50 bit Fed rate hikes and all the things it's going to do. The market is going to continue to be volatile. So my question is, is even if appreciation slows down, I was listening to a podcast this morning and they were forecasting that we will see a 0% appreciation in 2023. Now, I don't know that I believe that. And if you, lead a, if you read a lot of The economists, they'll say that it's going to be much slower, that it's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of four or six. But zero? I don't know. Maybe. Does it matter? I mean, that's when I started thinking about it. As I was listening to this podcast, I go, should that put me in a state of fear? Should that put me in a place where I don't buy? Because maybe I should wait. Right? Because maybe it'll actually dip. Because if somebody thinks that it's going to be zero, then maybe it's actually going to be negative. And if it's negative, then I can actually get a discount on that house and buy it when it's on sale. Let me ask you, have you ever tried to time the stock market? Like, are you a big fan of buying on the dips? Do you always buy low and sell high? I don't. I don't ever, like ever, ever. I can't time the stock market. I don't follow it enough. I don't understand it enough. I understand the economics and the fundamentals of the stock market and the bond market and how it relates to our, our mortgage market, our housing market, but I don't understand the individual stocks well enough to know how to time the market, to know how to buy stocks when they dipped or right before they've announced or right before a stock split or God help me try to figure out timing the whole Twitter conversation going on right now with Elon Musk. I'm not even touching that. Yet people want to time the housing market. So the housing market continues to remain strong even when we have times of turmoil because ultimately it is a place to live. And even when you see investors coming in and buying up apartment buildings and multi-units and multiple single families and whatever that is, those investors are purchasing a place for someone to live, right? I need to either own or rent. I have two choices or I'm on the street. I want, I'm not gonna sell a home like I would a stock on a good time to sell because if you were doing that, you would have done that this past spring, right? Because if I've had, I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with people who are selling in the fall or even next or the winter or around the holidays or whatever, because life dictates that I couldn't sell in the spring 
because I had children still in school, or I have college kids back at home with me this summer, or I have a job change that's happening in November, right? Or I have a new bill that's going to be done right around the holidays, or whatever the situation is, I'm not gonna sell in the spring because it's a hot time to sell because I need a roof over my head, which is why it's fundamentally different than the volatility we see in the stock market, that I might try albeit awfully, awfully is not a word, poorly, comically, <laughs> I, might, I might try to sell when the stock is high and it's just not gonna happen, right? I might try to time the market because it's just money at that point. It doesn't provide me safety and stability and financial um, health, right? It's that that awareness of, I need a place to live. I, I'm not gonna sell in the spring if my job transfer doesn't happen in the fall because where am I gonna go? I'm gonna have to turn around and pay rent and rents are going up. So real estate is so much more than an investment. Now, it is a fabulous investment. It is a fabulous hedge against inflation. I've talked the last couple of weeks because my mind was blown that somebody would pay over a hundred million dollars for paying the most money ever paid for an air uh, Andy Warhol print of Marilyn Monroe, right? Or somebody would pay over a hundred million dollars for the most expensive car that was ever sold, a 1955 Mercedes Benz. And I will say <laughs> that I repeated the year on one occasion, and I said, I think it's 1911, because I don't do cars, by the way. And I said, it's a 1911 Mercedes-Benz. My husband turns to me and he goes, uh, no. <laughs> he goes, there were no 1911 Mercedes-Benzes at all. I was like, okay, I need a car history lesson. 1955 Mercedes-Benz. If you can't laugh at yourself, I don't know who you can laugh at. I laugh at myself all day long. The housing market is a phenomenal opportunity to continue to put yourself in a position to leverage yourself against the volatility of the stock market, against the volatility of investments, of cryptocurrency and everything's going on. I'm not telling you to take all of your money out of those things and put it in a real estate, but I'm telling you in the last 70 years, we've only seen one housing crash and it was a recession based on housing. It was a fundamentals that had gone wrong crazy, fundamentally wrong. We were loaning to people who never should have been able to borrow. We had relationships with appraisers and real estate agents and lenders. And I am not gonna point the finger at any one particular person, but there was a whole lot of people with their fingers in that pie, right? And hindsight is 2020. You can name off all the things that were done wrong, but at the time, we've not seen a housing crash like that and at the time we thought this couldn't end right and i get that so there goes ergo this can't end so can it end and if i didn't think it could end then could it end now and could we have a recession well we have historically low inventory historically low we it takes six months of inventory to have a balanced market we have 0.6 0.6 months of inventory so we're starting to see active listings climb but the percentages are going to be high when you're climbing from the bottom, right? I mean, so the percentages are going to be high, the units are going to be small, but the units are starting to pick up to where, as I'm talking to buyers, they feel like they have more choices, right? I have uh, one of the folks on my marketing team, we were just talking right before this started, talking about what does it look like out in the housing market right now? And she's like, I'm shocked at how many choices I have. I talked to a real estate agent last night who's trying to find a way to creatively work a listing that he has. It's a VA loan at sub 3% rate. And he's like, can I do an assumable loan? So we're talking all about that because he's trying to market that home because it didn't sell in the first weekend. I'm having those conversations with real estate agents that it was crickets or they had two showings or no offers on homes yet 
Yet I had a buyer yesterday that didn't win a deal who had gone $35,000 over asking, but it had actually gone under contract $50,000 over asking. So those multiple bids over asking prices are still happening. This is what happens when you have transition. You have moments where it does not make sense. It doesn't make sense. So, ergo, it's going to crash. Right? Because if it doesn't make sense and we're heading into this thing where now all of a sudden we have too much inventory, right? We're going to fall over and people are going to lose their homes and people are going to sell and all these things. So let's kind of go through that. And then I want to talk about housing as a hedge against inflation. And then I want to wrap this up because this is what's on my mind today. When I heard the statement that we haven't had a housing crash except for the once in 70 years the strength of the housing market because ultimately it is your place to live so what are we talking about we are talking about colorado is the third from the bottom so it's number 47 in the list of all the states talking about uh the number of delinquencies and foreclosures right we are per like single digits, like 2%, 0.3% foreclosures. We have n hardly any delinquencies, hardly any foreclosures. Nationwide, the numbers are ridiculously low. We have historically low inventory. Nationwide, we only have two months of inventory. Nationwide, including the places that seem to have abundance. Two months of inventory. Now we have nine months of new builds, right? Nine months of inventory of new builds. Six months of those haven't even yet started. Like 0.8% of those are actually completed. So when you're talking about new builds, those are not gonna come in and save the day. Two months of inventory nationwide, 0.6 months of inventory here in the Denver market, right? So we don't have enough inventory and it will be a while before we get there because there's still buyers buying. I still have a pipeline full of buyers, even at the higher interest rates, looking for a roof over their head. Maybe, maybe not as many investors because I know that especially in the Denver market, it's harder to cash flow, but there's still opportunities. You're looking to purchase as a single fam or as a primary home. Do you have additional rental income opportunities like the new ADU rule that allows us to use the ADU rental income or a downstairs mother-in-law suite basement or buy a duplex or triplex or a quad and move into one of the units? Are you thinking outside the box to say, I need a place to live. I need a roof over my head and if I can use additional units to help offset that cost I want to do that we're seeing a ton of that we're seeing a ton of people looking to purchase primary homes getting the advantage of rental income still needing a roof over their head there are still buyers mortgage purchase applications were flat week over week this last week so mortgage purchase applications are slowing down as interest rates are continuing to rise but compared to what, right? I mean, we still have strong demand. We still have generational births 30 to 33 years ago that tell us the demand will remain strong for the next three to five years, regardless of what's happening with the economy, because millennials are getting married, having babies and buying homes. In fact, I had a real estate agent in my office yesterday, and not only did she say she was getting married, Right, and she's one of those millennials. She was getting married, and I think they were like right around 31 years old. She was getting married, looking to purchase, and she said every single one of their college friends were all getting married this year. She said, I have one to two weddings I have to go to every single month for the rest of the year. Right, marriage, first kid, home. This is going to continue. The demand will remain strong. And the inventory isn't picking up considerably to allow for that kind of swell of demand to easily find its place to have six months of inventory. That's not going to happen. So you have foreclosures at their minimum, delinquencies at their minimum, inventory coming up but off its bottom, right? Demand, you have demographics still on our side for the next three to five years. You have the fact that HECA mortgages, reverse mortgages, were at their peak in March, showing that those aging adults are aging in place, 
right? They're taking all that equity and they're converting it into a reverse mortgage and they're paying off their mortgage. They're never making a mortgage payment again. They're paying off their old mortgage. They're left with the reverse mortgage, but they're never making a mortgage payment again. They're taking out some of that equity and some of them are even taking out that equity and buying additional investment properties for continued rent income because that rent income is still going up, albeit slower, right? Along with appreciation. So you have this demand, you have the aging or aging in place, and the equity growth that we have seen in the United States tells you that people are not going to sell at a discount. They're just going to sell at market. Here's another thing that we need to know and talk about is everybody's starting to look at the fact that more homes are now going, are, are reducing their price before sale. I talked about this in the DMAR report that we just did last week in the video, talking about the fact that those people that had to do a price reduction were on the market for an average of 28 days. That is a massively long time compared to what we've been feeling and how fast the market has been moving. Nationally, that number is up to 24% of homes are discounting their price before they sell. Historically, that number is at a third. 33%. We are still well below normal. And when we get to normal, it won't even feel like normal because we've been so fast for so long. Keep everything in perspective. Yes, I know interest rates are high and yes, I know home prices are high, but appreciation will continue because demand is going to continue. Existing homes cannot fill all the gaps. In the past, somebody had sold a home and purchased a home. Now they're holding on to that home and they're converting it into a rental. Now they're keeping it in the family and selling it to a family member with a gift of equity. They are maintaining the home or they're aging in place. They're taking that equity. They're pulling some of that equity out and they're converting that home into a rental property and buying the next primary home with the equity that they've pulled out of it. That's what we're seeing a lot of in this market. We need to see more turnover, obviously. We're seeing a little more inventory, fantastic. None of this means that we're gonna head into a housing bubble. Interestingly, last week we had several economic indicators. We had the unemployment stayed flat at 3.6. We had ISM manufacturing index came in stronger than expected. Yes, consumer confidence is down, but that's based on the price of everything, right? The jobless claims actually went down. So we have all these things that are happening that are helping to continue to support the fact. We actually had a, a good, a decent, it wasn't fantastic, but we had a decent job claims, or uh, not jobless claims, but jobs numbers. Right? All of these things pointing to the fact that consumers are still spending because they are. The economy is still strong, although not in a revival. And we're continuing to push along, which is giving the Fed the ability to do what it's doing to control inflation. Hopefully they do. We might see a dip in interest rates next spring because of that, and the frenzy will continue. So let's end with this. We know that real estate is a hedge against inflation, but I wanna talk about the why behind that, right? Because everybody talks about real estate as a hedge against inflation, but why is it a hedge against inflation? Did you know that 95% of all purchases are done with a 30-year fixed? Well, a 30 or 15, a fixed rate mortgage right? 95%. So historically 5%, it's actually creeping up a little. There's more mortgage purchase applications right now for arms, given the higher interest rates, but most people roll back into a fix as soon as they can. So 95% of finance mortgages are fixed. That fixed was purchased. That loan was originated at the time. As that cost continues to go up with inflation going up, you are fixed at the time of purchase, regardless of the fact that everything else gets more expensive. Your mortgage payment is fixed. And here's the flip side of that. When you take that primary home mortgage that's fixed while rents are going up, while the cost of milk is going up, while the cost of gas is going up, long term, we always have increasing cost of everything. That's just life. Now, the extremes that we're seeing right now, we hope calm way down. But 2% is the Fed goal rate of inflation. 2%, not minus two. 
things are never going to get cheaper but two percent now do we have times of deflation of course but historically we're looking for a two percent rate of inflation so as the cost of everything gets more expensive that mortgage payment is stays fixed it is a hedge against inflation on the flip side if i turn it into an investment now i have the opportunity that mortgage payment is still fixed back to whenever i purchase that home and i locked in that that rate that is still fixed but rents go up with inflation rents and home prices go up with inflation so rents continue to go up more and more spreading the gap between my rental income and that cost of that mortgage continuing to add more income into my wallet right the hedge against inflation the other side of that is appreciation continues, prices continue to go up, home prices and costs are part of inflation. That loan to value continues to sink as the appreciation continues to increase. That creates a natural discount. Real estate is the best hedge against inflation. We are not headed towards a housing bust. Will the economy slow? I hope so. Will spending slow? I really hope so, because consumer spending is 70% of the GDP. I hope all of those things happen. I hope appreciation slows down. Would it shock me if we had a 0% appreciation next year? A little bit, a little bit, but I wouldn't be upset about it because I know that the value of my home is holding and that it is a hedge against inflation, the cost of everything, and that rents will continue to remain strong and that will continue to create safety, stability, and a financial being that I can create wealth for myself and for my children. That is the power of real estate. You guys have an incredible rest of your day. Give me a call if I can help in any way. Nicole Ruth Ruth team, we'll talk to you guys soon.